Hey, hey, what up guys? Nim Ricardo here with FireMed Tips. And we got a special video for you guys here today, all right? So today we're gonna be going over symptomatic wide complex tachycardia with pulses. All right, also known as VTAC with pulses and it's monomorphic in nature, all right? Last episode, Ryan showed up on episode 2.1 of the ACLS Prep Academy. He went over narrow complex tachycardia with pulses, so SVT. Today on the ACLS Prep Academy episode 2.2, we're gonna go over symptomatic wide complex tachycardia with pulses as monomorphic in nature, all right? So let's get into it. All right, so let's break it down. Symptomatic wide complex tachycardia with pulses, VTAC with pulses, monomorphic in nature. That's a mouthful, all right? It's a mouthful. What does it all mean? Let's break it down together, all right? So symptomatic, symptomatic. This patient is symptomatic to what's going on on scene. As soon as you get on scene, you're doing your general pressure, monitor in one hand, drug box in the other hand, Big chest walking through that door, boom, boom. This is who you're gonna trust. You're not gonna trust this guy, all right? Let's get into it. Who are you gonna trust? This guy right here. So when you're doing your general impression, what are you watching? What are you seeing from the outside corner of the room? You're looking at the patient, is he diaphoretic? That means he's compensating for something, right? Is he tripoding, showing shortness of breath? That Levine sign, clutching his chest, all right? These are all symptomatic. Something's going on with this patient, but we don't know exactly what until we properly assess them, all right? This is that general impression, seeing what symptoms are going on, right? Symptomatic on this patient, all right? So, wide complex, when I say wide complex, what does that mean? Am I talking about the PR interval? Am I talking about the ST segment? Am I talking about the J point? No, I'm talking about the QRS complex, that ventricular depolarization, all right? I'm talking about the QRS. All right, tachycardia, tachycardia is generally a heart rate over 100, but in this case, the patient is firing so fast that heart rate, it's gonna be between 150 to 250 where the patient is firing so fast that this rate is not sufficient to sustain life, all right? And also monomorphic, all right? Monomorphic, it might be a new word for a lot of you guys, but monomorphic is just a fancy term that the, the heart rate right here, the rhythm is just symmetrical, all right? The voltage is all symmetrical. It's not small voltage, large voltage, small voltage, large voltage. That'd be more so like polymorphic VTAC, torsazid points, all right? This is gonna be monomorphic VTAC. It looks symmetrical all across the board, all right? So I know what you guys might be thinking. So I say VTAC with pulses, right? With pulses, that's a critical statement because it can either be pulseless VTAC. Pulseless VTAC is one of our shockable rhythms right off the bat, right? It's gonna be V-fib or pulses VTAC. We're gonna straight up defibrillate that, not say cardio, we're gonna defibrillate those two rhythms, right? In a cardiac arrest, this is gonna be symptomatic, wide complex, tachycardia, VTAC with pulses. That is monomorphic in nature, all right? I just wanted to just say that, say that before I get into the weeds of it, all right? Just so we're all on the same page. So. All right, so how do we determine if someone is symptomatic, right? So there's a spectrum of symptomaticity that you have to use as a paramedic. You have to kind of take into perspective, is this patient, sick or not sick or are they minor moderate severe as far as you put them on the floor lead you see that rapid white complex VTAC with pulses going on on the monitor when you put them on the floor lead and now you're thinking to yourself is this patient symptomatic what intervention should i do how should i intervene all right that's when i came up with the chaps acronym all right in episode 2.1 should ryan showed it he went over the chaps acronym with you guys for svt all right what you should do for that but for this one i'm gonna break it down real quick all right, so chest pressure. All right, C. So that heart rate is so fast. It's firing, those chambers are firing so fast that there's less oxygen-rich blood allowed to fill up the entire lumen of the artery, all right? So this is how a normal artery would be, oxygen-rich blood being sent to the, to the major organ structures, to the cellular level, as well as ultimately the brain, right? And ultimately, major organs, I'm talking about the lungs, the cardiopulmonary system, the heart, right? The brain, everything, right? So it's cellular level. So if the heart rate is so fast that does not allow the lumen, the arteries to fill up with adequate amount of blood, right? So it's not gonna be reaching from the floor to the ceiling adequately. So it's gonna be sending less oxygen-rich blood to that heart that's gonna be perceived as chest pain to the brain. Now the patient's gonna be saying that they have chest pain or chest pressure, all right? So chest pain. Next one's gonna be hypotension. This patient is becoming hemodynamically unstable. So that heart rate is so fast that it's gonna drop that cardiac output because there's not gonna be sufficient funds of the arteriorich blood reaching from the floor all the way to the ceiling of that lumen of the arterial wall, all right? So there's gonna be dropping cardiac output and ultimately 
drop in blood pressure, all right? Hypotension, patients are becoming hemodynamically unstable. ALOC, less oxygen blood is reaching the brain, all right? Patients are becoming altered. Now, pulmonary edema. The patient is essentially going into heart failure, that backfall of blood into the lungs, all right? So due to that heart rate is so fast, those valves aren't able to adequately close in time, sending blood back into the pulmonary system, back into the lungs, having that heart failure, all right? And also, next thing is gonna be skin signs. Poor skin signs to be exact. This patient is compensating for something. Now they're showing diaphoresis. They're really sweaty. Skin signs don't lie. As a medical practitioner, as a paramedic, an EMT, nurse, doctor, PA, whatever, we all know that skin signs don't lie, all right? You're not sweating for no reason. Your body is compensating for something. Take that into account, all right? This patient's diaphoretic for something. Let's dive a little further, all right? All right, so let's talk about what the heck is VTAC, all right? What the heck is VTAC with pulses, all right? So essentially, this is organized chaos, all right? So ventricular tachycardia with pulses, it already tells me, break it apart, tell me it's happening in the ventricles, all right? The lower chambers of the heart. So let's take it back a few episodes to episode one, where we talked about the electrical pathway of the heart and the mechanical pump of the heart. And let's talk about the electrical pathway of the heart real quick. We have three pacemakers, right? We have one primary pacemaker and we have two backup pacemakers, right? First one is gonna be the SA node, sinoatrial node. Next one is going to be the atrial ventricular node, AV node. Next one is gonna be the Purkinje fibers, all right? It's gonna start right here. Let's go bzzz, Bachman's bundle, internal atrial pathways, bzzz. AV node, the gatekeeper allows the ventricles to fill up. Bundle of his, we have a fesh, officially hit the ventricles. Now left and right, bundle branches to the apex of the heart, to the Purkinje fibers, all right? So in matricular tachycardia with pulses, these two pacemakers are not even doing their job. They didn't even show up to do work. They even, they're not doing anything, all right? So the pacemaker and the ventricles, the Purkinje fibers are going to assume the role as a primary pacemaker and say to themselves, oh shoot, I don't wanna die, so I'm gonna do work. All right, they're gonna do work and they do work real hard to the point where this patient is gonna be symptomatic, firing at a rate between 150 to 250. And that's not essential to sustain life, all right? That's, that rate is way too fast to sustain life. All right, so these pacemakers are firing incredibly fast, assuming the primary pacemaker of the heart because these two are not doing their job. All right, that's essentially what VTAC is. All right, so real quick, I got some good news and I got some bad news. The good news is that this rhythm, VTAC with pulses, this is a more organized rhythm than VFib, as well as you're not dead yet. All right, and also we do have some, some tricks and tips inside our drug box and our monitor where we could potentially fix it and you could put, potentially just be out of the rhythm altogether. All right. Bad news is that this heart rate is so fast that this is not sustainable for life. If we don't act quick, this patient could decompensate so quickly that they could potentially just code right there. All right. So the, pa the patient is going to be hemodynamically unstable in worst cases, eventually just go into hypoxemia and eventually just code. All right. So there's also two different types of, we consider VTAC with pulses. We also consider like a run of VTAC where we have ectopic beats, PVCs, PJCs, PACs, where we have like three in a row, triplets or quadruplets. That'd be a run of VTAC, all right? But that's not necessarily anything to worry about because it'll fix itself. It's paroxysmal in nature, all right? I'm talking about the VTAC with pulses that are entirely, the strip is being printed out and it's clearly VTAC on the rhythm, all right? And it's with pulses, the patient's not dead at this point. All right, so this is the good news and the bad news about VTAC with pulses. So now let's talk about the four lead. When the, we put the patient on the four lead real quick, what are we gonna see on the rhythm? We're gonna have, we're gonna have a rate between 150 to 250. That's pretty significant. Those, those chambers are firing so fast that the patient is compensating for that loss of oxygen blood filling from, from the floor all the way up to the ceiling level of oxygen-rich blood in the arterial walls. That rhythm is gonna be regular and monomorphic in nature, all right? Monomorphic in nature. P waves, there aren't gonna be any P waves because it's not happening from the SA node. The SA node is not doing its job. It didn't even show up to work today. It's not gonna have any type of P waves involved. And the PR interval, it's not gonna be any type of PR interval because the atria, nothing going on right now except for the ventricles assuming the, the primary pacemaker of the heart. 
All right, so 150, 250, regular monomorphic in nature, no P waves, no PR interval. Let's talk about the causes, all right? What causes VTAC with pulses, all right? What causes? That's very important to know. How do I prevent this, right? So stimulants. Everybody is affected differently with caffeine. People that are very prone to different types of caffeine levels, different types of uppers. So caffeine, cocaine, meth, uppers, anything that's gonna jack up that heart rate really, very, very fast. They can potentially go into VTAC with pulses, all right? Med history, med toxicity, digitalis toxicity, where the patient is having some type of uh, a reaction to the digitalis, all right? Digitalis toxicity, didoxin, all right, electrolytes imbalances, all right? So all those electrolytes in the heart, the magnesium, the calcium, the potassium, the sodium, all of these electrolytes play a role on the firing capabilities on that heart, the cardiac action potential. And if those electrolytes are whacked out, something's gonna, not gonna be ordered right, all right? So not gonna be happening correctly. Next one is gonna be cardiac history. MI, myocardial infarction, cardiac death. When a portion of the heart dies, you can't regenerate cardiomyocytes, you can't regenerate uh, brain cells either. So once it dies, the heart is never going to be the same. So you could potentially have uh, VTAC with pulses after an MI, potentially. All right. And usually people that have VTAC with pulses, normally they know what's going on. They probably have a history of it. They'll probably tell you, I have a fluttering in my chest. They probably might know what's going on. All right. So interventions, what do we have in our drug box that potentially save the day and ultimately save this patient's life? What do we have? All right, remember CHAPS acronym. Big sick, little sick, right? Moderate, minor, severe. How are we going to intervene and really do something about it, all right? Are we gonna automatically go from fluids, boom, fluids aren't working, I gotta go ahead and sink cardiovert. Are we gonna sink cardiovert right off the bat? Are we gonna start with amiodarone drip? All right, so we gotta be able to read the patient. What do you gotta do first, all right? So some of the things we could do are fluids, right? Fluids. We can hopefully slow down the heart rate and we can also fill up that void space within the artery, within the artery, that void space, that air pocket right there, where normally it should be like this, oxygen-rich blood from the floor to the ceiling. Since it's firing so fast, there's there gonna be a little bit of a void space that we can hopefully occupy with some normal saline, okay? Increasing that cardiac output and ultimately bumping up that blood pressure, all right? In, improving the patient's hemodynamic stability and ultimately making them feel better, all right? Stabilizing them. We're in the business of stabilizing the field, all right? Amiodarone trips. So this is gonna be the live dose, 150 milligrams in a, into a 50 to 100 cc normal saline bag given over time. So this is gonna be an IV amiodarone drip. All right, so the way this works, amiodarone is a class three potassium channel blocker. So it's going to prolong phase three of the cardiac action potential, extending that refractory period, all right? Making the heart more resistant to any type of ectopic beats or any type of external uh, electrical stimulus, all right? Hopefully preventing or just stopping the VTAC vid pulses event that the patient is experiencing. All right, next one is gonna be sync cardioversion. Sync cardioversion, synchronized cardioversion. I'm not talking about defibrillation, I'm talking about sync cardioversion. So it's very important to slow down real quick. If you're gonna go the route of sync cardioversion, slow down real quick, press the sync button, making sure you have everything in line, making sure you have a full set of vital signs, you have an IV established just in case the patient codes, right? And once you sync cardiovert them, and make sure you sync that R wave. If you don't sync it, you could potentially go the R and T phenomenon, putting the patient into irreversible V-fib. So it's very important that we sync on the R wave, sync and capture that QRS, and then we have the stars over the R's and sync cardio for this patient, all right? So the difference between defibrillation and sync cardioversion, defibrillation is a, a full dose of joules, essentially, and sync cardioversion is essentially half of the dose of joules to, compared to defibrillation, all right? So on defibrillation, those are patients are already dead essentially. Those are for V-fib, pulses, VTAC, pulseless VTAC, all right? There's no pulse on this VTAC patient. They're already dead. And for sync version, the patient is not dead yet. We're gonna stars over the R's for any type of rapid, rapid heart rates, all right? 
So we can do that as well. So it's up to you as a paramedic medical provider, paramedic, RN, PA, doctor, whatever, to kind of look at the patient, what I got to start with first. Do I jump all the way to seeing cardioversion right off the bat? Is this patient severely symptomatic or they're hemodynamically unstable, blood pressures down, down, they are altered, they are, they have syncopal episode, near syncopal episode. Should we do with amiodarone drip first before we go into the heat of battle with a full synchronized cardiovert? It's up to you and it's, it's your discretion, all right? You got to be that patient advocate. What's going to be best for this patient at this time, all right? That's what you got to do. So this is episode 2.2 of the ACLS Prep Academy. This is symptomatic, wide complex, tachycardia, VTAC with pulses that is monomorphic in nature. This is Nick Ricardo. Guys, go ahead and like, comment, share this video. Let us know what you're gonna wanna see next. And we're happy, you, we're happy that you're able to enjoy this, all right? Thank you for your time, we're out.